Yeah. Yeah. has got that cool release too. He's got that Aaron Rodgers, Romo release sort of. And when we look at the quarterback play, it always equates to good football. We've spent a lot of time identifying quarterbacks over the last 12 months and uh, really thrilled with the athletes that we've been able to bring in and pair up with our quarterback development coach, Jordan Paul. I want to get my arm loose, right? I want to feel good, ready to rock. That should be a byproduct of the things that I'm working on. As we continue to watch the development of our athletes, we can't wait to see where they take their game and where they take the XFL's game, which is going to be great dynamic football. I think with this group, a series of events have happened and it didn't go the way they thought it was gonna go. For some of them, it's an injury. For some of them, they got beat out. For some of them, it was political. For some of them, they just played terrible. But everybody here can throw it. These guys can move, they're all big, they're all athletic. They all have thrown a lot of touchdowns and won a lot of games. And so now it's about realigning it. This is about loading lines of tension. Reorganizing it. Pelvis, trunk. And putting them in a position to be able to move forward. I've been able to work with some of the best quarterbacks in the NFL right now, and I'm about as excited as this opportunity to be the director of quarterback development for the XFL because this is the league that I needed. As far as my journey as a player, I don't know that it could be more relatable to what these XFL quarterbacks are going through. My story is I was on this couch. I was the exact same situation. Uh, I was a six round pick that got cut at the end of training camp. I worked out for nine teams that following season over the course of seven weeks. Keep in mind too, my brother's the number one pick. It was the exact opposite of my brother's career. Carson Palmer, his brother, was the first pick overall in the draft. He won the Heisman Trophy, had an amazing NFL career. And people go, so wait, you're, you're Carson Palmer's brother? Right, that overtime, that it eats at you. I go to the UFL, I go to the Arena League, I sit out a couple years, and then I end up playing in the NFL for a while. He played, I think, seven or eight years in the NFL. He's really what the XFL is about. These things that are part of my journey have put me in a position to really, I think, have one of the most unique vantage points over this position. Some of you guys need this opportunity. Some of you guys, this is gonna be the last thing you ever do in football, maybe. Some of you guys, this is that next thing that you needed to be able to trigger the rest of the shit that's about to come. The XFL opportunity represents a fresh start. It's a great opportunity to get more playing time. So just getting together with all these guys that are in similar positions as, as myself. I've been a guy that played Division Three football, played in spring leagues. Haven't really played a whole lot. I played a little bit in the preseason with Washington, didn't play at all with Detroit. But we have another opportunity here to get better, focus on our craft, and have a chance to play football again. This league and the approach, the leadership that this league has from the top down, the support that it has is exactly what's needed to be able to create a true developmental league. Also a league that can play really competitive football with great athletes in it. And that's why I'm sitting in this chair is I lived this life. I was these guys. I needed this league 15 years ago. Let's it fly. Bam. Effortless. Yeah. It doesn't even look like he's trying. The XFL is the league of opportunity. Most of the young men that are here have had NFL experience, major college experience. One of the things with quarterbacks in this day and age is that there's quarterback tutors and then you have your coaches and there's a lot of voices in their ear. And what we're trying to do is really limit that process so there's a, a, a consistency to the messaging that the quarterback receives. Uh, I've always believed that the limiting factor in a player reaching his potential is flawed mechanics. Flawed mechanics a lot of times comes from mixed messaging and a lack of an understanding of how, we're, how the body works and how we're actually supposed to move and throw. Everybody get feet in cement right now. Push your feet away from each other. Tap right here. Feel how that's activated? Okay, so we just activated the outside part of our hips. This is about loading lines of tension. So now let's get a rep here. Push my feet apart, lift my balls up. Inhale and exhale when you throw. I think this is the most important position in all of sports, and I think it's the least developed position in all of sports. Listen to a quarterback in the NFL talk to his quarterback coach about mechanics. Doesn't sound anything like the way a tennis pro talks to his coach, or the way a PGA Tour player talks to his swing coach, or the way a Major League Baseball pitcher talks to his pitching coach. Talk to a pro golfer. My driver is like this, okay? 
My irons are like this, and I and my putting is like that. They separate. We separate it, right? They're three different things. Okay. We should do that as quarterbacks too. I try and help these guys become what I call triple threats: physically, mentally, and emotionally. Ace, I'm working with quarterbacks from eight teams. That's eight different offenses. That's eight different philosophies that the coaching staff's going to have. So I have to be able to teach guys universal principles that fit with whatever system they're in. Jordan's different because he truly looks at the kinesiology part of it. You know, what muscles you're moving, how your core works, how your hips work, and how all of that goes into playing quarterback. And he's able to explain it um, in a very simple way for us to understand and comprehend it and go out and apply it. Here's what's happening is you're right here and you're doing this with your foot. Well, the reality is, is you're, you're kind of pushing here and then you're rotating, you're actually rotating your hip to get plant, but you're not moving your hips to here. I want you to drive to the point where I'm actually just driving myself open right now. So the reality is, is when we start doing this correctly, yeah, your foot might get to that angle, yeah. but it's getting to that angle because I opened my hips to that angle. Your stroke is what we're helping you with. Very throwing motion. Being able to miss left and know exactly why and fix it on the next throw. Throw it. Throw it. Throw it. Hey, pause for a sec, okay? You guided that one. We all do that every now and then. We aim one or guide one, okay? What actually happened when we do that, because that's fun, it wasn't a duck, right? Is the kinematic sequence is pelvis, trunk, elbow extension, internal rotation. Watching Jordan, he thinks about things in a different way. It's not just, hey, let's go throw 29 routes or let's work on this dig throw. He's looking at the position holistically from a biomechanical standpoint to a mental standpoint to try to improve quarterback play and get quarterbacks thinking in a different way. Once you get to a certain level, the margins are, are tiny, right? And so how do you improve those things? Well, you need data and tech to really understand what it is uh, and then how you can improve it. So we use eight cameras, uh, a markerless system, uh, 240 frames per second, capture everything from your big toe all the way to your thumb and how you throw a football. How's your sequence? How are you connected? When you're putting your foot in the ground, are you creating enough energy to go all the way through your body and to throw? Working with the team at Breakaway Data, we take the data that's collected from the ball, which is velocity, spin rate, RPMs, and spiral efficiency. What it's doing is, I think for the first time in the quarterback position, it's giving people a baseline. So think about a sequence. I want to go, like, here's a sequence. One, two, three, four. Because on that one, you're going two, one, three, four. Mm -hmm. The first thing that was initiated was your trunk. Your hips came along for the ride, is how I'd say it. They're going to throw a 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 balls in a week. How do you keep that arm healthy and strong so that come you know, the end of the season, they're still developing, they're still uh, playing at a top level. You need to understand how you move in order to really get that last part of that margin. So here's a skeleton version, okay? So teach me what we've been talking about today that would change this. So what would change this would be creating that force and stability. That's on which step? On crossover step. Yes. The left crossover step is what we're talking about. No stability there. No stability there. It's a weight shift. When Jordan can really take it to that next level, we saw 11 of 11 guys create more force and they are more connected either from their hips or their trunk. Four of them in particular with their hips have gotten over 30% better. It's not even how, how good you're getting at throwing the football, it's the ownership of your stroke and the ability to problem solve, troubleshoot when something's off, okay? That gets stronger, you get better at that, your confidence goes. We were to spend all of our time physically helping them throw it to better, mentally helping them get smarter at football, and then ignore the emotional state. For some of these guys, that's the number one thing they need to address. There's frustration, there's anger, there's embarrassment, there's resentment, there's humiliation. There's a lot of things that you guys are dealing with. I brought in somebody that I bring in when somebody's getting ready to be the number one pick, and he can come in and speak truth into these guys' life of here's where I'm currently at, let me take inventory of that, and then we can implement and give them some tools for how to deal with the things that are coming next. But we want to teach these athletes that they have lots of agency, they have power, they have opportunity. And the one way to really think about that in a healthy way is to think of every situation as a get-to opportunity. You know, I used to look at those hot days in the summertime, like, oh, I have to go to practice. 
But now looking back, I was like, I got to do that. And that's what I'm really looking forward to with this opportunity is that I get to get back to playing football. I get to get back to, you know, throwing the ball around, having that camaraderie with my teammates. And um, that's what I'm most excited for. I've already seen these guys continue to develop their game. And we want to see dynamic play on the field. We want to see a lot of points, you know, from the quarterback position. Um, but more importantly, the leadership that that position exhibits on a daily basis, again, both on and off the field. Um, we're expecting great things from our quarterbacks here in the XFL. There's more uncertainty than they've ever had in their career. And you have to find a way to be able to push forward and take advantage of if an opportunity comes, not when it comes. Being able to work with the best in the world and Jordan Palmer was something that I gravitated towards to choose the XFL. It gives me an opportunity to keep playing a game I love that I've been playing since I was four years old. It's a blessing to be here, man. I'm a lot better than that than I was when I first got here. That's how that matter. I want to see growth of every single person on the roster here. Quantifiable growth. And then I want to see some guys find the thing that was the missing piece. Good. Through this process and through the coaching staffs, um, they've solved for that problem. I mean, I can't wait for the season to start to see those guys implement that, reach their potential.